Good morning. morning. Welcome to worship here at Calvin Christian Reformed Church. Welcome, whether you're here physically present with us or watching online, we bid you welcome in the name of Jesus. And we pray that all of us together might, by the power of the Spirit, be led into the Father's throne room to stand with Jesus in glory today. Before we get started in worship, a few announcements. To begin with, we want to extend our Christian sympathies to Mary Reed and her family in the passing of her father. You may have seen uh, the note online that his uh, funeral and all that's surrounding it will be June 16th, this coming Tuesday, in Sheldon at Andringa, fun- Andringa Funeral Home. Uh, there will be a viewing from 9 to 11, and because of COVID-19, there won't be any of the family present at that time. Um, But afterwards, there will be a private family ceremony at 11 o'clock of a private funeral. So keep Mary and her family in your prayers at this time. Uh, With the passing of her father, we are giving thanks that he is past suffering now. A few other announcements. Uh, First of all, I want to thank Anjali for sharing her gift of music with us. And congratulations to our graduates. We got Will here among us and Devin Feenstra and Kevin Van Otterloo. Um, They're all graduating this year, and so we give thanks for them. And you can see more about the differing graduation ceremonies, live streaming, and at Unity Christian in your bulletin. Uh, The council also, of course, as we've mentioned a few, for the last few weeks, the council is looking for nominations for elders and deacons. We need two elders and two deacons this year. And so we ask you to be prayerfully considering people that you think might be a good fit for that. And also prayerfully consider whether you would be willing to um, fulfill one of those offices. Keep that in prayer. Um, Listen to the Holy Spirit. Just as a reminder, your tithe can either be put in the little basket in the back on the way out, or it can be brought to the church when it's open Monday through Friday, 10 to noon when Janet's here. And also there are CDs of past services out by the mailboxes. Feel free to take as many or all of them if you like. We're trying to get rid of them. So, yes, do with that as you will. I believe that's all of our announcements for this morning. Let's take a moment now as we prepare to enter God's presence, a moment of silence as we prepare our hearts for worship. Into this stillness we offer ourselves, our very lives, O Holy Spirit. Come. Amen. This time I would invite you to stand now for our call to worship this morning. Our call to worship comes from Galatians chapter 5. The Spirit of the Lord is the one who has gathered us here in this moment, who has called us to this place. And the Apostle Paul writes of the Spirit, he says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. Those who belong to Christ Jesus, you who have been gathered here from every corner of this town, you who belong to Christ Jesus, have crucified the sinful nature with its passions and desires, And since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. Let us keep in step with the Spirit. And so in this morning, this windy morning, the wind of the Spirit is upon us as we keep in step with the Spirit and we sing together, lifting our hearts in the power of the Spirit for our song of worship, Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing.
And as we come singing, the Great and Holy One blesses us with these greeting words. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And her, having heard that word of welcome, we as the children of God confess our sins to our Father through Jesus in the Spirit, and we lift up our voices together in our prayer of confession, saying together, O Lord our Father, have mercy on us. We have been wayward, we have fled your presence, we have even made out of bed in hell, and somehow you discovered us there too. All-knowing and still all-loving Father, have mercy on us. And the God of all grace, mercy, and peace assures us this morning of his kindness towards us in Jesus Christ. The Apostle Paul says that some might dare to die for a good person, a righteous person even, but God commended his own love towards us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us, rebels against God. And yet, Christ died for us. And so hear the good news this morning. You who have confessed your sins, Jesus says to you, your sins are forgiven. Hear that word from Christ in the power of the Spirit. Rejoice in it and believe it for Jesus' sake. Amen. Hearing that pardon and that assurance our hearts do overflow with joy. And we sing together our song of praise, Oh, for a Thousand Tongues to Sing. Our morning prayer, we gather together who we are with all of our joy and all of our sorrow. And so I invite you in this moment, by the power of the Spirit, to join with me as we bring before our Father in heaven all of who we are. Would you pray with me this morning? Holy triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. On this windy morning, we are reminded of the wind of the Spirit, that you, Lord, in person are present to us and among us, that you have brought us here, and that you have blessed us with the assurance of your gracious presence in Jesus Christ. And so as your children, we lift our lives in joy, and we offer before you all of our cares and desires. Lord, we think this morning of Mary Reed and her family in the passing of her father. And Lord, we give thanks. Thanks that in the last days that were so hard, 
you have taken him home. Taken him home to a place where he can understand again and rejoice in your presence. We thank you for the gifts that you gave to Mary and her family in the last days of his life. Bless them, we pray. Give them peace in this hard time. For even if he is now beyond suffering, Lord, this is the moment when our suffering begins at that hole in our lives, at that empty place at the dinner table. And so, Lord, we ask that you would surround Mary and her family with your comfort. Lord, we think of others who have lost family members as well in recent months, Anna Mae and others. Be with them also, we pray. We pray, Lord, for those who are ill among us. We think of Greg Smith. We think of his sister Melanie, each struggling with cancer. We think of Nomi Voss and John and Judy's daughter, Katie, also struggling with cancer. And Lord, we are thankful for again and again good news from each of them. And we pray, Lord, that that good news would continue and that each would find the touch of your spirit, a foretaste of new creation life in their lives with the word that the cancer is in remission. We pray, Lord, for those who cannot be with us. We think of Glenda Hoffman this morning. We pray, Lord, that you would keep her lungs well and safe. We pray for Frank Vandenbosch. We think of Patty Ritzma, Denise Mastbergen, Jan Sneller, and also Audrey Van Grau. Be near to each of those, Lord, who cannot be with us. Bless them, Lord. And there are many others, Lord, who cannot be with us as well due to health concerns. Or We pray, Lord, that you would be near to them as they watch at home at this time. Keep them from feeling lonely. Lord, pour out your presence upon them. Help them to see the gifts of the Spirit in their own lives, wherever they are. Lord, we think of our missionaries also in this turbulent time. We think of the Havlicek's, and we pray, Lord, that you would bless them. We pray also for the missionaries that we will soon be supporting, another family. Be with them, we pray. Lord, we pray for our nation at this time. We lift up holy hands with the Apostle Paul, and we pray for our leaders that you would give them wisdom and that you would always draw their hearts towards righteousness and peace. Lord, be with them. Those who are our national leadership, those who are our state leadership, and those who are our local town leadership, be near to each of them. Bless them with wisdom. And Lord, reconcile us as a people, we pray. Father, truly we are your children. We are the ones who feel the wind of the Spirit upon us. And so as that wind fills our lungs, we open our lips and we exhale this prayer before you, the Spirit-filled prayer of Jesus, saying together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Before we sing our song of preparation for scripture reading, I do want to take a moment to pray for our graduates, a special prayer for them. Um, usually we have them come up here, but of course with COVID, we're kind of 
Everybody just kind of stay in your seats. Um, but I want to pray for each of them right now and pray God's blessing upon them. So again, would you lift your hearts with me in this moment? Father, this has been a strange year for school. And yet we have those who have graduated from our church. Lord, we thank you for each of them. We thank you for Devin Feenstra, Lord. We thank you for Kevin Van Otterloo. And Lord, we thank you for Will Vermolm. And Lord, we pray that your spirit would be upon each one of them as they go off into lives after high school, that you would guide and direct them and you would bless them, O Lord. May the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon each one of them and remain with them always. And all of God's people here together said, Amen. As we prepare our hearts now to hear God's word, let's sing together to God's spirit, breathe on me, breath of God. Our gospel reading and scripture passage this morning are from the same text, John chapter 3, verses 1 to 21. John chapter 3. Now there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, who was a member of the Jewish ruling council. He came to Jesus at night and said, Rabbi, we know you are a teacher who has come from God. For no one can perform the miraculous signs you are doing if God were not with him. In reply, Jesus declared, I tell you the truth, no one can see the kingdom of God unless he is born again. How can a man be born when he is old, Nicodemus asked. Surely he can enter a second time into his mother's womb to be born. Jesus answered, I tell you the truth, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless he is born of water and the Spirit. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but the Spirit gives birth to Spirit. You should not be surprised at my saying you must be born again, or again, literally, born from above. The wind blows where it wills. You hear its sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it is going. So is everyone who is born of the Spirit. How can this be, Nicodemus asked. You are Israel's teacher, or literally, you are the teacher in Israel, said Jesus. And do you not understand these things? I tell you the truth, we speak of what we know, and we testify to what we have seen. But still you people do not accept our testimony. I have spoken to you earthly things, and you do not believe. How then will you believe if I speak of heavenly things? 
No one has ever gone up into heaven except the one who came down from heaven, the Son of Man. Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the desert, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe stands condemned already because he has not believed in the name of God's one and only Son. This is the verdict. Light has come into the world, but men love darkness instead of light because their deeds were evil. Everyone who does evil hates the light and will not come into the light for fear that his deeds will be exposed. But whoever lives by the truth comes into the light so that it may be plainly seen what he has done has been done through God. Brothers and sisters, this is the good news, the story of Jesus, the gospel of the Lord, to which we say, praise to you, Lord Christ. Would you pray with me now that God's word would come to us in this moment with power and Holy Spirit reality. O breath of God, breathe upon us, we pray. Come upon us with holy power so that the word preached might become the very word of God to us, Jesus Christ, present and here, speaking to each one of us, convicting and comforting. And so we pray, Holy Spirit, come. Come upon us, that the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts might be acceptable in your sight, O oh Lord God, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. I kind of think the title is fitting for today, The Wind and the Whirly Gig. In fact, as I was walking here, I was feeling very Holy Ghost inspired by all the wind. Well, speaking of wind, at the ranch house where I spent six years of my life as a child, just off the porch, we had a whirligig weather vane that was affixed to this gnarled old, old post. My parents had found this whirligig at some antique shop in Missouri, brought it home. My mother had repainted it in vivid primary colors with a few other thrown in, red, yellow, blue, and some pink and white. And of course, like all whirly gigs, this was not your typical weather vane. When the wind would blow, as it's doing right now, and I can see the bushes moving out the back door, when the wind would do that, the tail vane would spin the propeller into position, the propeller would begin to turn, and you could hear the mechanism, clack, 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 clack. And a little old cutout man in blue jeans, a red shirt, pink hands, and a white beard would begin to cut with a bow saw a little stick of firewood. And the speed of his cutting was always, of course, dependent upon the speed of the wind. If a storm was come, cutting in, he was cutting loads of firewood. I mean, he was really going. And you could hear that mechanism turning, clack, 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 clack. But if it was just a gentle breeze, it was just clack, clack, clack. An eternal rhythm inspired by the wind. The pendulum of his pink hands and white beard back and forth, back and forth. I imagine that he cut thousands of cords of imaginary firewood over the years that he was pinned out to that old gnarled post outside of our house. Clack, 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 clack. Well, the last two weeks, we have talked about the wind of God, the Holy Spirit. We have talked about how the Holy Spirit always points to Jesus Christ, does not draw attention to himself, that he is ghostly in some sense, invisible, not saying, look at me, but look at Jesus. And last week, we talked about how the Holy Spirit is God in person, how he's not some sort of blind, ambiguous force, 
some sort of energy that you can kind of plug into to get things done, but that He is God in person, come near into our lives. And yet, despite knowing that the Spirit is invisible, pointing to Jesus, and despite knowing that the Spirit is God in person, come near to us, if we're honest, we sometimes wonder what in practicality it really looks like to see the Holy Spirit's work. We imagine our lives, I think, in some ways, like we are all these whirligig weather vanes affixed to a gnarled old post outside of a house, and that we live in a world without wind, that God has put us here to do our best at getting our own mechanism going, clack, 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 so we can saw our own firewood. We think of heaven and earth as two very separate things. God is up there, we are down here, and we have to do the best that we can. And it's hard for us to imagine what Holy Spirit work might look like in actual practice. I know for me, spending time as a child in a sort of semi-Pentecostal charismatic church the sense was that the Spirit did these wild, extraordinary things. But to talk about the Holy Spirit's practical reality was hard for me to imagine. It can still be hard for me to imagine. What does the Holy Spirit's actual work look like if he's invisible, pointing to Jesus, and yeah, he's God in person, but, but where do we see that? Practically, on the ground. Aren't our lives just honestly fairly windless? We do the best we can, sawing the wood. And in this, I think we can sympathize with Nicodemus in our text this morning. Nicodemus, that old, well-known, sage among sages in Israel. Jesus calls him the teacher in Greek, the teacher in Israel. And yet, he sits in that room with his head in his hands, shaking his old head, his brow wrinkling above his shaggy eyebrows, tugging at his white beard. Jesus has spoken about Holy Spirit action, Holy Spirit reality, the wind of God at work in human lives. And on the one hand, the teacher in Israel understands this, right? He believes in God. He even says, Jesus, we know you are one who has come from God. Look at all the amazing things you do. But what does this mean when you talk about birth from above? What? The only time the Spirit of God shows up is in wild and crazy ways. What do you mean by this? His imagination runs stuck. He imagines life as if we're each a whirligig affixed to a post. And there is really no wind in this world, no Holy Spirit action in this world. And we are called to somehow get our own propellers going. Clack, 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 And saw our own cords of firewood. He's puzzled by this. Sure, there are angels that wing their way back and forth across the barrier between heaven and earth, but they're the exception that proves the rule. How is it that one can actually see the Holy Spirit's work? He's invisible. But of course, Jesus speaks in very different terms than us. Very different terms than Nicodemus. Jesus imagines the Spirit of God as a great wind from on high. The person of God come down and near to his people. A wind that cannot be seen, no. An invisible, ghostly presence, always pointing away from itself, yes. But still God in person having concrete effects, visible reality in human life. Jesus says, 
why are you stunned that I talk about being born from above? You know about the wind. You hear its sound. You know that it's blowing around, but you don't see where it's coming from or where it's going. So is everyone who is born of the Spirit. And of course, Jesus is punning here in good rabbi fashion because the word spirit in Greek and in Hebrew both is the same as the word wind. Ruach in Hebrew, pneuma in Greek. In the ancient mind, wind and spirit, this was kind of a fluid concept. So the wind, the spirit, blows where it wills and you hear the sound of it, but you don't know where it comes from or where it is going. So is everyone who is born of the spirit. In other words, says Jesus, while the Spirit of God is invisible, His works are not invisible. You can see what He's doing in concrete terms in human lives. You can hear something. Clack, 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 clack. You can see the weather vane spin the tail. You can see the propeller start to turn. Because God has come down to do work in human life. To make people into those who are born from above. Those who are cutting cords of firewood in an eternal life rhythm back and forth. The tug and pull of the bow saw over that stick of firewood. Those who look like Jesus himself. For you see, this is, again, what Jesus is hinting at. As we talked two weeks ago, the Spirit's work is always to point to Jesus, invisible himself, but to manifest and exalt Jesus Christ. And it's no different in his concrete work in human lives. Because Jesus himself was a man driven by the Spirit of God. The propeller of Jesus' life turned... There was a holy gale roaring. I mean, he was clack, 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 clack. And he was sawing cords and cords and cords of firewood. Back and forth, an eternal life rhythm. From his conception by the Holy Spirit to his resurrection from the dead by the power of the Holy Spirit. Jesus was a man with a Holy Spirit-driven life. In fact, his very title is a Holy Spirit-driven title. Christos, Christ, Messiah, the Anointed One. Jesus in his first sermon preaches, the Spirit of the Lord has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. The Spirit of the Lord has anointed me. I am Christos, anointed one, Spirit anointed one. And so Jesus was the very man born from above. The one, as verse 13 says, who came down from heaven. He was the true human being in many ways. And as the Spirit pressed him in his life, and as his pink hands and white beard carried that eternal rhythm of tug and pull of the bow saw, the cords of good works and humane living of holiness began loads and loads of firewood to pile up around him the kindness with which he showed his mercy to the prostitutes, the peaceable words that he offered to the cheating tax collectors while he sat with them and ate with them, the patient shaking of the head at his thick-headed disciples, Always Jesus faithful to his father. Clack, 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 clack. The propeller spinning, the Holy Spirit at work in and through Jesus. And so it is, sisters and brothers, that the wind from God blows upon the whirly gigs of our lives. As those who participate in Jesus, there are real and concrete evidences of the Spirit's work in our lives. The wind, the spirit blows where you it wills. You hear the sound of it, clack, 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 clack. But you don't know where it's coming from or where it's going. 
such as everyone born of the Spirit, you see the effects of the Spirit, even if the Spirit himself cannot be seen. You see, the Spirit spins that weather vane of your life around and begins to turn the propeller and begins to propel you to look like Jesus Christ with every tug and pull of that bow saw you begin to manifest the work of the Spirit. The Apostle Paul himself knew this when he spoke in Galatians 5, as we read this morning for our opening in worship, of this fruit of the Spirit, this practical, concrete reality of what it looks like when the Spirit blows in our lives. Paul says the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, goodness, kindness, gentleness, self-control, and so on, faithfulness. Against such there is no law. This is what it looks like when the Spirit blows over our lives. The propeller turns, and we start sawing firewood, cords and cords of firewood. We begin to have kindness and faithfulness and love and mercy and all these things pile up around us because of the work of the Spirit concretely in who we are. When I first moved to town, I used to go every Friday to the little apartment complex just south of the fire station to visit Frank Vandenbosch as part of my shut-in visits. Every Friday for about 10 minutes, I'd just pop in. And of course, you all know Frank and Frank's um, uh, mental handicap. But we would sit there on the <laughs> sofa. He would sit in his brown chair, and I would sit in the sofa. And we'd have the same conversation every week, of course. What are you watching on TV, Frank? Price is right. Law and order, two favorites. When I visit him at Touchstone, still we talk about Price is Right and Law and Order. And then he would tell me about how he got his John Deere hat and about the mower he used to win the um, tractor pull a couple times years ago. And then how the doctors were lying about how he uh, had a stroke because he didn't have a stroke. And then how kids had uh, stolen his TV about 10 years before, but some kind police officer had brought it back. These were the sort of stories we cycled through every week. But one week, I brought my year-and-a-half-old eldest daughter with me. And as we sat there, and she had her fingers in her mouth, and she wasn't sure she wanted to be there. She was just kind of all over the place. Frank got up and motioned us into the kitchen of his little apartment, and he opened the door of his fridge, and he pulls out a half-eaten cake, a half-eaten cake that had seen better days. He opens it up, and with a shaking hand, he slices off a piece and puts it on a paper plate, and he sets it in front of my daughter, and he takes a dirty fork out of the sink with still some egg on it and hands it to her, and he motions, and she smiles, and he smiles, and she begins to eat. And before we left, he went to the freezer, and he opened the freezer up, and he pulls out Little Debbie Cakes. Now, you have to understand, again, Frank would go with his social worker every week to buy groceries. He only had a small amount of money that he could spend, and he always bought himself Little Debbie Cakes. He loved Little Debbie Cakes. So he gave her a few Little Debbie Cakes, and I thought, oh, that's sweet. But that was not the end of it. Every Friday after that, and I only, I think, brought my daughter one other time, every Friday after that, as I would get up to leave, Frank would amble into the kitchen, open the freezer door, and pull out at least two or three packages of Little Debbie cakes, his favorite cakes that he gave his little pittance for every week, and I had to have them for my daughter. Clack, 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 clack. You see the propeller spinning? That's Holy Spirit work. It's not wild and crazy. That's Holy Spirit work. Pointing to Jesus. Frank, tugging and pulling a bow saw across a stick of firewood. 
God's Spirit at work in his life. Holy Spirit work. Another story. A friend of mine, uh, Susan, was flying across uh, the United States, heading out to visit her son, who she hadn't seen in some time. Right in the middle of snowstorms, everything's going wrong at the airport. She's stranded in, doesn't think she's going to make her connecting flight. And I mean, the anxiety is beginning to rise within her. She's feeling frustrated, a little angry. And I believe there was a, it was a, um, a devotional or so sitting on the bench beside her there in the airport, and she just picked it up. She flips it open and looks, and the first thing her eyes see on one of the pages is, God is in control. And in that moment, she is flooded with peace. In that moment, she finds herself trusting. Clack, 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 clack. You see the propeller turning? The spirit blows where it wills. You hear the sound of it, but you don't know where it's coming from or where it's going, and so is everyone who is born of the spirit. The spirit making us look more and more like Jesus Christ. Now, as a small epilogue to that story, the spirit of God also has a great sense of humor because Susan still has that devotional, and no matter how many times she pages through it, she cannot find a page that has on the top, God is in control. The Spirit blows where it wills. You hear the sound of it, but you don't know where it's coming from or where it's going, and so is everyone who is born of the Spirit. Brothers and sisters, as you go out now in mission and in ministry this week to love and to serve God, go out watching and listening for the work of the Spirit in your life. Clack, 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 clack. Watch for the propeller turning. Feel the bow saw in your own hands as you tug and pull over that firewood. Because God is at work. We don't live in a windless world. There are concrete, real signs of what the Spirit is doing in your life. Very ordinary, but very beautiful. Watch for them. And when you see them, give thanks for them. Don't. Good job, Nevada. Good job. Spirit work. Good job. No, no, no. Give thanks. Give thanks that you participate in the life of God himself, that you are being made to look like Jesus Christ. Give, th give thanks. The wind is blowing, so let's start sawing some wood. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Brothers and sisters, as the Spirit of the Lord moves among us, we can hear even now the clack, 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 as our hearts are lifted up in worship and as we sing in joy to our God, crying out in our song of response as we stand together and sing, Holy Spirit, living breath of God.
brothers and sisters, as you now indeed go out in mission and in ministry to love and to serve God in the power of the Holy Spirit, go out watching for the wind in your life. For we do not live in a windless world, but the Spirit of God is turning your propeller and causing you to live a life that looks like Jesus. Live into that reality and give thanks for it. And receive now the parting blessing of our God. God, go before you to guide you. God, go behind you to protect you. God, go beneath you to support you. God, go beside you to befriend you. Be not afraid. Let the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit descend upon you, settle in around you, and make its home within you. Be not afraid, and go in peace.